guys. Thanks for joining me again for story time. This is Chelsea at Wayfairy Books and I'm really missing you guys. I assume you're missing your friends too. Sometimes we get kind of lonely being stuck at home. Well, I am going to read you a story about another little critter who was missing his friends and he came up with a really special way to connect. So maybe we can all learn something from this story. This story is called Elmore by Holly Hobby. Elmore lived by himself in an ancient maple tree. He loved it there. You see him way up there in the tree? Every few days, he would climb down the huge tree trunk as darkness fell to graze on his favorite leaves and twigs. Then back he would go to his snug hollow in the ancient tree. Elmore was solitary. That means he lived alone. And you wouldn't think he'd be, or you would think he would be used to that by now. But here's the thing. He often felt lonely. Solitude could be boring. Are you guys starting to feel a little bit like that? Maybe kind of lonely sometimes? He'd always had trouble making friends. What was the problem? After all, the L in Elmore's name, his mother once explained, stood for love. He put up a sign. His sign says, friends wanted. He was discouraged by what he overheard. He's too prickly. It's hard to be around him. Elmore shook his back and his quills rattled. It was true. If you got too close, you might get needled, nettled, prickled. Elmore didn't mean it. It just happened. He spent a rainy day holed up in the ancient tree, thinking about what to do. What could be done about his troublesome quills? They were there to protect him, like a coat of armor, but protect him from what? Elmore's life was peaceful. He was lucky. He didn't really need protection from things, did he? The next day, his old uncle happened to come shuffling along past Elmore's tree. Good morning, Elmore. A moment later, he said, you don't seem your usual cheerful self. Is something wrong? I wish I didn't have all these quills, Elmore explained. I'm too hard to be around. I have no friends. I'm your friend, his uncle smiled. That's different, Elmore replied. But you are a porcupine, his uncle stated emphatically. You wouldn't be a porcupine without quills. I know, said Elmore. I've got hundreds and thousands of them. You're a handsome porcupine, his uncle added. Your quills are beautiful. You should treasure them. His uncle's kind words made Elmore feel better. Then, as he looked at the many quills scattered about his cozy, his cozy dwelling, he had an idea. Elmore tied up each small cluster of quills with a bit of string. See him working hard here. He posted another sign. This time his sign says, Elmore Quill Pins. 100% real porcupine quills, free. Oh, look at this crowd. For two days, they went like hotcakes. Everyone could enjoy a quill pen, especially if it was made from 100% real porcupine quills, and free too. They could make ink from berries, Elmore suggested, which was extra fun. Everyone loves getting a note from a friend, he said as he handed out the bundles. That's true, isn't it? By the time the last quill pens were gone, Elmore was tuckered out. But most of all, he was happy. In the days that followed, he received all kinds of notes. It was exciting. Let's see, here's a note that says, we love our quill pens. This one says, this is a picture of us. Let's be pen pals. One bright morning after the quill event, there was a big sign tacked to the trunk of Elmore's tree. You are a beautiful porcupine. Our woods are lucky to have you, your friends. Sometimes we have to be a little creative in how we relate to our friends and how we keep in touch with them. That's why I'm doing these story times because I want to stay friends with you guys. I want you to know that I love you and I miss you. And I hope that you're sending notes and drawing pictures and doing all kinds of fun things to keep in touch with your friends too. 
Hang in there, guys. We'll all be together again soon. Love you all.